Holy Gospel according to Luke. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who feared neither God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Pray with me. O oh God, we have prayed many times over many years for many things. And if our prayers do not seem to be answered, we get discouraged. Teach us in this hour about the prayer request you want us to make so that your spirit transforms us into the people you want us to be for Christ's sake. A few weeks ago on Mental Health Sunday, you remember that we were invited to come forward and to light a candle for someone we cared about, were worried about, concerned about, prayed about. I was amazed at the dozens of candles, dozens of candles that were lighted. They showed so clearly the number of people in our congregation who carry burdens that are known only to them. And I suspect that every person who was remembered as a candle was lighted for them had been prayed for time and again over weeks and months and sometimes years, but the prayers had not yet been answered. The parable we heard today was written by Luke about 30 years after Jesus died. And after he died, his disciples had expected him to come back soon, but he didn't. And they had experienced persecution, injustice, suffering, in spite of the fact that they had continued to pray, thy kingdom come and thy will be done, but the kingdom hadn't come and his will hadn't been done. And they were beginning to wonder, does God hear our prayers? Is Jesus ever coming back? And so Luke includes in his gospel this parable that Jesus told, told his disciples about the need to pray always and to not lose heart as we sometimes do. When we have knocked at what seems like a closed door for so long, as we have prayed the same prayer for so many months and it still hasn't been answered, as so many of you have done and are still doing. The woman in the parable today, the widow, uh, she was a widow and so the issue at state was probably about her husband's estate. Uh, in that day and time, she would not have inherited the estate. By their law, it would have gone to her husband's sons, whether they were her sons or not, or to his brothers. But she kept hounding the judge persistently, day after day, until he finally says, I'll grant her justice so that she does not keep coming and wear me out. Is the point of the parable that we need to keep going to Jesus and pestering him until, or going to God and pestering God until he gives in and finally gives us what we ask for? Is that the point of the parable? Is the point of the parable that God will give us what we ask for just to get rid of us? No, of course not. Jesus said, listen to what the unjust judge says. I'll give her justice so she doesn't wear me out. 
But will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. Jesus was using a traditional teaching method, a Jewish teaching method of going from the lesser to the greater. If this unjust judge who doesn't fear God and gives justice just to get the woman off his back, how much more will God hear our prayers and answer them? But then Jesus said, but when the Son of Man comes, the Son of Man was his term for himself, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Jesus knew that life would be hard on earth after he left. He knew that people would pray and their prayers would not be answered in the way they hoped for. He knew that when their prayers were not answered in the way they hoped for, they would become discouraged and lose faith and give up on him. Honestly, I don't find much in that parable that helps us with the burdens that we carry about people we love. But Jesus gave us some hope in another parable that he told about being persistent. You remember the parable about the person, the man who at midnight, an unexpected guest arrives at his house to stay for the night and to be fed? And the man had no food for him, so he went to his neighbors and he pounds at the neighbor's door. By now it's one o'clock in the morning. He pounds at the neighbor's door persistently till the man gets up, takes the bushel off the lamp so they have a bit of light. He finds some bread. He gives it to the, the neighbor and he goes home happy. Well, at the end of that parable, Jesus said, so I, so I say to you, ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who seeks will find, and to all who knock, the door will be opened. He said, if you, if you have a child and your child asks you for a fish, will you give him a snake? If your child asks for an egg, will you give a scorpion? And then he said, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? We need to be careful about the ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be opened. Has that been true in the things in your prayers that you've asked for and searched and so on? Jesus did not mean that if we ask, God will give us a loving relationship with someone that we have longed for for so many years. He didn't mean that if we seek hard enough, we can find some medical cure for our loved one's cancer. And he didn't mean that if we knock long enough, the door will be open and we will get that promotion that we've longed for for so many years. He wasn't saying he would give us any of those things. What did Jesus say God wants to give us? How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? It was the same Spirit that came down on Jesus like a dove on his shoulder at his baptism. The same Spirit that was in Jesus' speech in his first sermon in the, in the synagogue in Nazareth. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to bring good news to the poor. It was the same Spirit that gave to Jesus' disciples that first night after his resurrection. They were locked in the closed room. He came through the door, said, peace be with you. And then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. As the Father sent me, so send I you. It was the same Spirit that came at Pentecost and little tongues of fire above the heads of the disciples and empowered them to speak in the language of every person from every nation who was there. That's the spirit that God says he will, God will give us. It's sort of like playing with fire in a way. 
But if we ask for God's Spirit, what will the Spirit do in us and for us and with us? Well, ultimately transform us. One of the things the Spirit will do is to focus our attention more on God and on God's will than on ourselves. Sometimes the Spirit will soften our hearts so that we are more able to forgive someone who has offended us. But importantly, sometimes the Spirit will harden us, strengthen us, so that we are able to withstand the trials that life always brings. The idea that any of us can do the things God wants us to do and be the people God wants us to be without the help of God's Spirit, foolish. We need to ask the help of God's Spirit every day as if it were manna for our lives so that we can withstand any adversity that may come, actually that will come. Rick Warren, the pastor and the author of the best-selling book, uh, A Purpose Driven Life, he and his wife Kay had a 27-year-old son, Matthew, who had fought depression and mental illness for years and ultimately took his life by a gunshot wound to his head. Rick and Kay gave a sermon together soon after his funeral. Rick spoke first and he said, for 27 years of my life, I have prayed every day of my life for God to heal my son's mental illness. It didn't make sense why my prayer wasn't being answered. When you go through a difficult time, you automatically start and try to find an answer, but explanations never comfort. Explanations are not what we need. What we need is a presence, the presence of God. Kay got up and spoke to the congregation after him, and she said she had a premonition that it was going to happen that day. And when they got the news that it had happened, she put on a necklace with a small pendant that said, Choose Joy. And she said as they sat crying together, she grasped the pendant and held it up, and Rick saw it and nodded his head. And she said to the congregation, how could Rick and I choose joy when our hearts were shattering in a million pieces? The reason we know that we can have joy in our deepest, darkest times is because for nearly 50 years, we have been sending the roots of our lives deep down into God's grace, God's mercy, God's love, and God's goodness. For nearly 50 years, they had grounded their lives in prayers for God's Spirit. In our Gospel today, Jesus told his disciples to pray daily and to not lose heart. We need to pray every day as if that prayer were manna for our day and ask God to strengthen us and give us courage and give us hope until the day we no longer need to light those candles. Until the day we need to no longer light those candles.